Welcome to No Clip, the podcast that's like a book club for people who don't think that books reward them enough for being good at them. I'm Chad Rothermans. And I'm Andy Kinney. And today, we're going to be talking about Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. <laughs> also. Uh, but first, you can give us a like or a rating. It'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, Super Mario 3D World was released in 2013, uh, obviously was developed and published by Nintendo, uh, and then in 2021, we got the re-release on the Switch, which includes Bowser's Fury, which is, to, for the most part, the version that we're going to be discussing today. It's the only version that I have played. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have played both. Yeah. They're basically identical. Uh, I meant to look up whether or not Rosalina was in the original game, but didn't. I do. I don't think that she is. Yeah, that sounds right to me. So <laughs> that might be the only difference. Yeah, we can address this on the second half after we look it up. Yeah, which, which we, we will forget do. to do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, that is that's our intro. Uh, <laughs> Super Mario 3D World is, as you can imagine, a platformer. Now. Whether this game is a 3D platformer is sort of more ambiguous. I think, yes. It is. But there is a conscious effort being made to present the game as sort of a middle ground between a 2D and a 3D platformer, specifically Mario games. Yeah, this was like a, a follow-up or spiritual successor or sequel to Super Mario 3D Land mm -hmm. on the 3DS. And it felt like the concept made a lot of sense on the handheld to try and merge 2D and 3D together, the design sensibilities. Uh, and then I think out of left field, uh, <laughs> no one expected them to do like for the Wii U's 3D Mario game to be this conspiracy theory. What if they made this the 3D platformer so they didn't have to spend a lot of effort making a game for a console that nobody purchased? Uh, I mean, that's, at least somewhat possible, but I think it came out like the second year it was on the market, so they were already developing it before the Wii U launched. Yeah, and you don't you doubt that they would have even released the console as it was if their assumption was that no one yeah. was going to buy it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the actual reason, like why they went this direction, is because the two D games have always sold better than the three D ones. Mm -hmm. And I think they wanted to, and especially on the Wii, like the Wii U is supposed to be like the Wii 2, yes. basically. <laughs> they thought all the people who loved the Wii would also buy the Wii U. And I know like new Super Mario Brothers Wii and things like that sold really well on that console. So I think they were trying to cater to that market, but making something a little bit more exciting. Yeah, I think that like as far as, as far as first person, first person, first party, uh, Nintendo games, this period between the Wii and the Wii U is like the roughest patch that they've probably ever experienced. Uh, most of the in games... In recent times. Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll cut them some slack around Virtual Boy, I yeah. guess. But like the, uh, like in, in recent memory, these are the games that are the most, uh, controversial. People don't fall on one side or the other universally. Uh, and I feel like 3D World has a reason for that. I think that more so than there being a really clear problem in the form of the Wii's default kind of shaky motion controls, making Skyward Sword sort of a, uh, a, a hot topic. A divisive game. Yes. Uh, this game plays very similar to a a regular ass Mario game, but it has these little quirks that I can see people going one way or the other on as far as like, Oh, I really like this element of it. I didn't really like this element of it. Yeah. I think kind of like my thesis on the game is I think they actually did a really good job of like threading that needle and making a game that sits right in the middle point between 2d and 3d Mario. Mm -hmm. And what you get there as a result though, is that, you end up with a game that's liked by everyone and loved by no one kind of scenario. That's You're that, not, like, like, I'm sure there are a small percentage of people that just love this game, mm -hmm. and then this is for them. 
But I think most people, especially with Mar- the Mario series, lots of people are familiar with it. Like, you fall on the 2D side or the 3D side, which, which ones you like, and neither of those audiences is going to like this one as much. Yeah. Like, if you ran down some of my favorite Mario games, I'm definitely more in the 2D camp, generally yeah. speaking. And, and I'm on the other side of the fence. Right. Um <laughs> with the with the exception of Sunshine, which I feel like is a breakout great game, mm-hmm. uh, and, and Odyssey, obviously, I, th- I thought was really good, and you can listen to our episode on that. Um, this game feels like, like you said, they tried to thread that middle between the two, and what you end up with is kind of the worst of both worlds. It, it ha- doesn't have the elegance and the simplicity of control of a 2D game. Uh, and it also doesn't have the, like, open, exploratory sort of elements of a 3D game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was probably going to be essentially what my final thoughts were, like, prior to this. <laughs> uh-huh. But I think it's a great way to start the discussion, because, like, it's not bad. <laughs> no. <laughs> and my experience with it was more that the way that this game was designed more just made it really hard for me. Mm. This is one of the hardest... Mario games that I have... It's the, one of the hardest times that I have had with a Mario game uh, in in my history. Yeah, I feel like that's got to be uh, attributed to your eyesight. My special eyes. Your special eyes. TM, TM. <laughs> um, <laughs> TM fucking 1-800-CONTACTS, yeah. whoever that was. <laughs> yeah, like, because if you have problem with, like, depth perception with this, I could see how it would be difficult. But I think this is one of the easiest Mario games <laughs> uh, that I just kind of, like, breezed through both times. I mean, I definitely got used to it more yeah. as the game went on. And, like, obviously you saw I, I made it... I did a lot of shit in this game and made it all the way to the final level, uh, which I never beat. Champions Road or Champ- whatever. Yeah. Fucking... I didn't get to the Elite Four. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... It took a long time for me to get there, and perspective is a huge piece of it. And perspective is why this game is unique, really. Uh, Because a normal 3D game, you would have the camera behind your character's back. This game controls like a normal 3D game, but the camera is fucking over here. Yeah, it's got the fixed camera Mm -hmm. angles. Semi-fixed. Yeah, (laughs) semi-fixed. Yeah, well, that's that's the one thing I wanted to talk about, is the fact that it lets you tilt the camera. Mm Mm-hmm. It just seems like a really weird decision. Like, I've noticed, like, watching you play a little bit that you were doing it ever. Yeah. Um, which I think might even make the game a little bit harder, because I think keeping that fixed perspective uh, makes it easier. Like, you can get used to, like, uh, the way it's set up, and then you keep dying, and then you check, oh, I'll switch the camera, and then you run into your own little problems viewing it from that camera angle. So I tended to just always leave it as it is. Right. I I feel like I do disagree with you. I think that uh the fact that they allow you to change the camera angle is there for very specific purposes. Sure. I think that there are people who will have an easier time taking things on from a vertical versus horizontal angle, uh, because it's just easier to see where things are to them. Mm-hmm. But I also don't disagree with you in that <laughs> you can get into a situation because I believe the cam or the controls even like the movement locks directionally in like straight lines mm-hmm. and changing the camera angle fucks with how that happens. Yeah. So it's like when you're moving from left to right in this game in a level that's supposed to be more of a 2D level, which there are a number of that mm-hmm. are like flat plane with obstacles and you just jump on them uh the game doesn't let you like be off by a few degrees and have mario just run into the wall Mm -hmm. like because that would be awkward and bad so they sort of snap you to that plane and then when you turn the camera now you're going at an angle or you're like running in a weird direction yeah like it they just never seem like worth fucking with that kind of (laughs) stuff to me (laughs) personally there are a few levels that i feel like i could not have beaten if they didn't let me change mm. uh i know uh star two or whatever oh yeah i, I didn't play many of the star levels mm-hmm. that the level that unlocks rosalina has a section with 
the blink blocks that flip after mm. a period of time and you have to run a great distance on them and then jump into a thing and when you're sideways you have no idea how far away the block is mm. and so if you turn it to the front it makes it like i don't i don't know if i ever would have cleared that level <laughs> yeah. if i can change the camera angle but then that is one of the bonus levels so yeah. maybe there was more of a consideration of like we don't have to be as stringent yeah the advanced play here <laughs> <laughs> using the right stick yeah <laughs> Uh, so another way this game is a lot like the 2D games is there's uh, more of a focus on power-ups. Mm -hmm. um, some of the 3D games have had them. Um, they usually try to do them in a different way. But, like, Galaxy straight up has power-ups. Yeah. But they, they feel, like, differently implemented here. Like, I think a lot more, like, in the spirit of the 2D games. I don't know exactly what the difference is. <laughs> Um, I think it's more that, like, they're integrated into the level design a bit more, whereas in, like, the Galaxy games, it's, like, n less necessary. They're more just kind of, like, fun additions. Yeah. This game has, um, <laughs> I hesitate to say Mario 3, because Mario 3 had that bizarro menu that when you press select would, like, flip up on the bottom, mm. and you could throw a power up at yourself before you started a level. Mm -hmm. um, but at least starting in Mario World... Uh, it had like a little box in the top of the screen and whenever you got hit it would drop the power up that was in the box mm. on top of you and this game has that mechanic basically ported directly into it where you can store a power up for use later mm -hmm. uh, and the game really wants you to keep that in mind <laughs> yeah uh, like you said with the level design like having it be more heavily implemented it really there are a lot of levels that they obviously expect you to have either the like the cat suit or the tanuki suit mm -hmm. in order to even like do what they like they're possible to do yeah but they obviously want you to have the suit in order to yeah, do yeah especially thing. with the cat suit like mm -hmm. you know it's a cat suit level when it's a cat suit level for sure uh i personally I don't know how I want to... Because I don't hate the cat suit. But the cat suit is, a mo, is, like, is like a low-tier Mario really? power-up to me. I don't like its functionality. It feels too good mm. in a way that, like... If, it felt, especially when you're doing the later levels, you just have to go get cat suits and come back all the time to be, like, to do something easily. Yeah. No, I mean... I, if that's your criticism is that it feels too good, yeah, then I feel like I'm on the same page. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like it for that. <laughs> sure, I mean, fair enough. Uh, I, I think the thing about it is that the attack is too good. Mm -hmm. Like, usually it's harder to attack things safely. Like, it's usually like a risk-reward thing yeah. in Mario to attack stuff. And, like, the claw attack, it's, it's just too safe. I agree. I think... Um... Cause like the I like the climbing and the pounce, though. The pounce is really cool. If what the cat suit did was let you climb and pounce, I think I would be, I would be much more positive on it. The attack is the thing that yeah. Because like I think. the tanuki tail, you can attack with, but the hitbox is small. So like you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it needs some kind of tweaking, I think, because it just feels too safe. Yeah, and I mean the fire flower is debatably in the same has a similar issue in that it makes attacking things too safe but it's harder to aim though it's difficult like to in aim, the 2D and games. it's a classic yeah like in the 2d games it has that kind of uh property to it as well but in this it feels almost like nerfed to hell yeah it's weird that in mario games for 40 years 35 years however long it's been mm -hmm. uh having a fire flower in an underwater level is like the ideal situation you always want the fire flower in underwater levels mm -hmm. uh and fire and water are like like fucking the most opposed things in real life in metaphor games books anything yeah and they're still just like... Ice and fire. Yeah, and you just fucking... You gotta have it so you can shoot fireballs at fish. Yeah, the bloopers. 
Uh, and it persists. I think it's true in this game as well. The cat suit does a pretty decent impersonation of it. Um, it's it's the power ups in this game are interesting. I think, but the boomerang is my favorite. Uh, the boomerang is good. Yeah, yeah, it's really sick. I love all the different things that it like allows for. Uh, but nothing will ever beat for me the fucking Super Mario Galaxy Two Ice Flower. Oh, the Ice Flower, yeah, that's in the um, the new Super Mario Brothers games as well. I think. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that thing is sick, and I like making platforms out of enemies. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at in the power up world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't disagree that the uh, the Ice Flower is very cool as well. <laughs> Uh, would would have been cool to have in this mm-hmm. as well. I think it would have fit. Um, but one thing that makes the Fire Flower feel weird to control is in this game, there's like an axial locking to your movement uh, to where you don't really run in a circle. You run in like an octagon. Mm-hmm. Like how the GameCube controller had the little eight notches in it. Yeah. Uh, like it corresponds in that way where you can't quite go in a circle. You're always on a little bit of an angle. Uh, and I think that makes it hard to aim the Fire Flower. Did least... the gamepad have those? No. I didn't I, think so that, either. Yeah. I don't think... Yeah. No, it was just a circle. Uh, I can't think of another controller that's ever had that other than the GameCube controller. <laughs> yeah, but it, it also can make, like we were talking about earlier, like some of the platforming at an angle and stuff a little bit awkward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's very odd. And we haven't even touched on the fact that... Uh, Super Mario 3D World has four, two, five playable characters, uh, depending on what version of the game you're playing. For the mo- for the majority of the game, it's just the four? Yeah. For, like, literally you have to complete the main game yeah. in order to even unlock Rosalina, so. And so having those different characters also changes sort of how you're going to approach any given level, because they are substantially different with the exception of Mario and Toad, who, like, Toad is a little faster. Yeah, Toad is supposed to be the fast one. Yeah, but I did not find myself feeling like I was playing significantly differently with them. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, Peach, Luigi, and Rosalina all feel like totally fucking different characters. Yeah, no, 100%. And it's the, uh, like, throwback to Mario 2, Mm where you have, yeah, as you said, Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad. Um, And it's something I like a lot. Yeah, uh, like having different characters to play as in Mario games is is nice. We've all played as Mario a million times. Um, yeah, you know, my first playthrough I played, I think mainly is just Mario the whole thing, and then so this playthrough I wanted to do a Luigi playthrough. Uh huh. Um, and so I did, and then I used Peach like on that last level with like the the lava level with the rolling. Oh uh, yeah, if guys, because can... it made that one a lot easier. Um. But yeah, yeah, they do all feel meaningfully distinct, with the exception of Toad, who yeah. is who's there. Who's... <laughs> <laughs> I did. I have to say that like this is like a modern Mario thing as opposed to a, an old school Mario thing. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I guess that's not even true. I think he was was he, was Toad blue in fucking Mario two. Yeah. Okay. I it's love the color coding. Yeah. Yeah, I love blue Toad. Like, cause blue Toad shows up in. Mario 2, and in Mario Maker 2, and in this game, Mm -hmm. as, like, the playable Toad. Uh, But, like, most people think of Toad with the red spots. Yeah. And then I know that they have, there's a rainbow of Toad colors. But Blue Toad being, like, his own distinct character, I think is great and should be continued. Oh, yeah. And, um... And there's also Captain Toad in this one, uh, who mm-hmm. who has been uh, a canonized character at this point because he was in Odyssey, as well. Um, but well, yeah, and no. in Captain Toad's treasure tracker. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, yeah, I'm on the same page. Like, I like that they have like the different colors of Toads being like kind of becoming their own little characters. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, especially the red spot ones, which I guess are the generic ones. I'm looking at one right now. Yeah. If I can stare and... Hi! <laughs> we gotta get the Toad in Mario Kart to be Blue Toad. That's true. Start a petition. Yeah. Mario Kart 9. Well, with, I know in Mario Kart 8, you could change the colors of Shy Guys and Yoshis. We need that for Toad as well. Oh, you couldn't do it for Toad? No, I don't think so. That's a shame. Uh... 
But yeah, we should talk more about the characters' differences, and specifically what I want to hear from you. Yes. I played, I played through, I want to say, like, uh, a fourth, like, a quarter of the game Mm -hmm. as Mario, because my, in my head, what I'm thinking is, the game is probably designed... Around Mario. Around Mario for a single-player playthrough, and then, at some point, I was like, there's all these characters that I'm just neglecting, I can't do this, Mm -hmm. so I just started randomizing my character for every match, and, uh, I hate Luigi. (laughs) So you did a whole playthrough as Luigi, which is just infinitely impressive to me, because <laughs> I felt like Luigi was like trying to control a sack of flour tied to a hot air balloon. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know, because <laughs> I thought he just felt like a character that I controlled, uh-huh. and I just kind of did it. He didn't did not feel like a hot air balloon. No, at all. Like, I mean, uh-huh. he does jump higher. And he has like some more hang time on his jump, mm-hmm. but like, I didn't think that was really hard to like adjust to at all. <laughs> I thought it was impossible. Sure, sure. Uh, like I feel like I really dislike playing as Toad, even though he basically is just Mario. So mm-hmm. I guess everybody has their little preferences. That's true. And I, nobody's preference is not Peach. Yeah, because Peach is just like easy. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Speaking of yeah, things that feel too good, mm. Peach is one of them. Yeah, but I actually I really like that Peach is playable in this. Um, it felt it, it shouldn't feel as refreshing as it did that what I was doing in this game was not rescuing Peach. Yeah. Like, I like that she's just one of the gang in this one. Yeah, I agree. Um, And I I feel like the problem just, like, is that the the Mario team focuses 100% of their effort on creating, like, very specific mechanical differences. Mm -hmm. And then they're like... All right, game's done, and they're like, "Game's done." What what happens in the game? And they're like, uh, 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 "Bowser comes and he can ask Peach." Yeah, fucking dust <laughs> dust the hands off. Uh, I don't actually, I don't know at all what the plot of Galaxy Two is, but Galaxy One also has like a more grandiose sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, you, you had to go to space. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, also save Peach. Yeah, I think. If I'm not mistaken, I've never played Galaxy 2, um, but it's basically a really weird, like, just retelling of the first game story. Mm. Like, it's just like, it acts like the first one didn't happen, and then just, it's just the same thing again. Mario Galaxy 2 is the Evil Dead 2 of video (laughs) games? Kind of, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Um, So I'm assuming, yeah, like, Bowser just kidnaps Peach and the castle and takes them into fucking space again and you chase them down. Yep. That sounds about right. Yeah. So yeah, it is, it shouldn't be refreshing and yet it is. Yep. So that is one yeah. definite positive. Even though they just replaced Peach with these little fairy things <laughs> uh, that are very generic. Yeah. Uh, it's still, I, I like that. <laughs> the Mario series has a difficult time creating new like protagonist characters who are any good yeah and they really have just stuck with the same ones forever rosalina is a hit at least among some people yeah i like rosalina i I think they should incorporate her more because like they keep it's like they flirt with it Mm -hmm. like they'll include her sometimes here and there like in this she's a secret character like just put her in the game right like she's she's in smash She's in Mario Kart. She does. I think she's in the sports games now. But like, it took them a while. Like, they didn't know if they wanted to do it, right? <laughs> uh, to integrate her. And like, I think she's just stuck. So you know. Yeah, and Mario Galaxy is a game that's beloved by tons of non me people. So yeah. like, there's <laughs> always like a, an audience for it. Yeah. You know? uh, and I like Rosalina. I think Rosalina is a perfectly fine character, uh, even though I don't know basically shit shit <laughs> all about her. Uh, so, and it did suck a little bit that she's in this game and is also just, like, too good. Mm. Like, both the princesses well, in this game are, like, obscenely it, strong. It wakes... It, it wakes. It, it wakes. makes way more sense for the secret unlockable character to be too good. <laughs> yes. Um, but one thing that we mentioned and um, we can transition into talking about is Captain Toad. Yeah. Uh, so there are, like, these bonus or extra type of levels... Uh, that are the Captain Toad levels, uh, and they are completely different type of gameplay. I think, I'm not sure if it was, like, 
this was an idea for its own game and they were had a hard time pitching it so they were <laughs> like we'll include it as like a mode in this uh and so we can like, give it a shot like they convinced them to let them do that much um and it ended up like paying off, I think, because the Captain Toad levels are really cool, and they I like the difference in kind that they add mm-hmm. uh, to break up like the platforming. Um, so yeah, you play as a toad with a big backpack on, and that's the justification for why he can't jump, which is a very cute uh, Nintendo kind of thing. Yeah, and you there's like these little dioramas, like you can they almost kind of remind me of like Monument Valley or something, uh, and you turn them around. Um, with the right stick and you had to maneuver around through like a little obstacle course that you can't jump in to get all the stars. <laughs> yeah. And they, for me anyway, ended up being like my second favorite part of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're very, they're very cool. Yeah. I know for a fact, uh, and I, I own Captain Ted's treasure tracker and just haven't played it. Oh, wow. Um, but <laughs> I have it on disc, which is weird for me. I never mm. have anything on disc. Um, but to me, like, I, I know that there's a limit, and once it gets so hard to a mm. point, I will probably have slightly <laughs> less fun with it. But I really enjoyed it, both for the difference in kind, like you said, mm-hmm. and also just, like, this is the kind of puzzle game that I really like that allows sort of, like, free movement, and you never really, like, hit a wall where you just have to restart or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, like, sandboxy mm-hmm. and uh, accessible. Yeah. It's a really fun time, and I liked it a lot. Um, even the the final level, like once you get to fucking Crown Crown or whatever it's called, mm-hmm. uh, where Champions Road is, there's an additional Captain Toad level, and then an additional Fairy House, which is a fucking nightmare. It's the mm-hmm. hardest thing ever. Um, but the Captain Toad level, super fun. They ramped the challenge up, I think, in a really appropriate way, and they implemented the, like, touchscreen control objects that like go up and down Mm. when you tap on them uh in a cool way so i think that captain toad like scaled really well and was done well all the way through and i would be afraid a little bit that captain toad's treasure tracker is like too much of a good thing yeah uh the way that it's scattered throughout this game is really nice yeah from and i've never played it um so this might just be slander by me (laughs) but um (laughs) from what i've heard about it it's that it's like bloated with like they like they felt like they had to pad it out to justify charging as much like forty bucks for it, mm-hmm. so that it just kind of like, I don't know, yeah, like as you said, it's like too much of a good thing. Like it it feels like it should be shorter. Is what I've heard. Yeah, they stop it every five levels and have you do a platforming level where you play as Mario. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I I think the perfect like this is the perfect implementation of the idea is to have it as like a side thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'd like to see it come back in future Mario games as like a as like a, a little just part of Mario now. Yeah. I don't know. I doubt they will do that, but keep bringing the character back. Well, if you look at like there there's a lot of there're going to be a lot of things that we sort of like take from this game and apply to other things. I've already mentioned the power-up system from Mm. super mario world in this game uh but to bring it forward from this game you can see sort of the evolution of like including captain toad which is a game that controls completely differently than the base mario game Mm -hmm. and then look forward to mario odyssey where you have almost captain toad styled uh, uh, hat captures where you will have a character who can't jump or a character who jumps in like a funny way um, throughout the whole game like tons of these little differences in kind as a bunch of different mini games I think that this is something that they definitely want to work with and mm-hmm. like keep doing as time goes on um, and I think it's I want to say that it's welcome more so in this 2d overworld style game Mm -hmm. than it is in a 3d game but i also loved odyssey so like maybe i'm just full of shit it's like a like a fusion i think um the way it is in odyssey like you have those like yeah it's it's kind of like the middle ground between like power-ups and something like a full-blown captain toad type thing Mm because like the things in odyssey that come to mind are like you'll get the little onion guy (laughs) capture (laughs) and then you'll enter like this area that basically turns it into like a 2d mario level where you're navigating through like this like side of a red 
girder building thing, whatever it is. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it kind of turns it into, like, a 2D platforming challenge, like, sort of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, they are, I feel like, trying to integrate that kind of 2D design philosophy into the 3D games. Yeah. A little bit more. And I think it's a good move, I think, overall, especially when it keeps, when, when the pace of it is snappy, when you know what you're doing, yeah. and it, like, lasts just long enough for you to get, like, a satisfying experience out of it, which Odyssey did a really good job of most of the time. Um, I will shout out that some of the, like, <laughs> post-game extra moons had versions of this that went on for far too long. <laughs> Uh, the Sherm missions in particular were almost always awful. Yeah. Uh, but that all sort of, to me, feels like it stemmed from this. And we're going to talk in the second half, presumably, about Bowser's Fury, which feels like the training grounds <laughs> for a lot of stuff that I don't fully understand the context of. Sure. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that's a whole thing. Uh, so another thing uh, that I wanted to to talk about briefly is um, I know you're not a big Mario 64 guy, mm. and I don't remember if Sunshine had these sort of things. But you remember, you know, like the slide levels. Yeah, I've, I've, were... I've, I've actually have played both the games within like the last six months. Mm. So I do. Yeah, they it has like slide esque mini game levels. Yeah, like those are those feel very like N sixty four to me because uh, like Donkey Kong sixty four has that shit too, mm. uh, and I'm sure other things uh ripped off mario in that way and just kind of included those sorts of things but uh like rascal had a slide level it sure did it was fucking awful yeah um but uh i think that uh plessy in this game is a really nice like evolution or like kind of replacement of that kind of idea Mm -hmm. of like a more like downward momentum moving uh kind of level but you feel like you have more control. Yeah. That that was the biggest problem with the slide levels, particularly the hard versions of them. Um I know that the fucking s- snow snow ass peak peaky <laughs> blinders mountain. Uh, snow ass peak. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite level. Yeah. Uh had the Freeze Easy pe- Peak. Freeze Easy Peak. No. Had, that's Banjo Kazooie. That is. Whatever, it continues. Yes. The snow level for Mario 64. Yeah, snow ass peaks. With the penguin. With the penguin. Yeah. Had the the big penguin race slide. This might be Cool Cool Mountain. That is Cool Cool Mountain. Yeah, okay. Yes. We did it, folks. <laughs> As it turns rest out. Rest easy. <laughs> rest easy peaks. Uh, that we got it correct. Mm-hmm. But uh, it has the big penguin race stars. And there's two of them. And there's the one for just like not dying and then there's the one for like beating his time right yeah that second star is so frustrating if you're a bad super mario 64 (laughs) player and none of the plessy levels ever reached that level of frustration for me yeah it's good you can't fall off the edge is the big thing you can there's a few oh are there there's the one on the sand dunes Mm. where when you go down there's like the goomba statues and shit okay uh you can fall off on those but it's much harder to do it's a lot harder yeah. yeah uh but yeah it is it's fun and i like the sort of like incentive to hit all the enemies uh to like get coins and mm-hmm. shit and sometimes there'll be like a green star that you have to like bounce to grab and stuff. Yep. Uh all that shit's it's it's really good and it makes you want to do it in a cool way. It gives me skateboarding game feelings sometimes. Yeah, it's not a bad comparison. Mm-hmm. Like downhill jam <laughs> kind of a feel. <laughs> well, and also we gotta shout out Plessy is the is the best new original character yeah. in, in a Mario game in a long time. Yep. Uh, uh, in in my mind, like I want this to be the case, so I'm just going to believe that it is. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing about Mario 64 that I always found like really intriguing and like mysterious is there's the um, uh, the level where you get the metal cap. Yeah. 
I don't remember the name of it. Uh, um, Hazy, Hazy Maze Cave. Hazy Maze Cave, yeah. Um, there's a dinosaur in it. Like, mm-hmm. you just come down, like, this uh, shaft, and there's, like, a lake with a dinosaur in it. That always really stood out to me, and I, I, I want to believe that Plessy is, like, inspired by that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I always assumed that it was. I, I incorrectly thought that Plessy had the same color scheme as it oh no but it's super is it's like the opposite plus he is orange and that dinosaur is blue it's blue like a dark greenish blue yeah uh and i didn't realize that until i replayed super mario 64 Mm. six months ago yeah so (laughs) having then done that i was like oh shit like this is a totally fucking different dinosaur yeah different kind of dinosaur as well well plessy isn't really based on any one specific dinosaur ever, but right well presumably the plesiosaur yeah but the plesiosaur notably probably not orange almost <laughs> certainly did not have a rad hairdo yeah either. um but yeah i always made the connection between the two yeah. as if they were the same but Mario has a long history of interacting with dinosaurs, dinosaurs weirdly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like dinosaurs and desserts and <laughs> ghosts. Yeah. Those are your through lines of bizarro m- Mario shit. Yeah. Bizarro Mizarro. Yeah. And uh, and we'll talk about it later, but I like um, uh, Plessy's implementation in, in Bowser's Fury as well. Hard to agree. Uh, so another thing um, is... I don't know if you agree with this or not, because mm-hmm. um, you know, as as you can probably tell, we have very different opinions on Mario, <laughs> weirdly, um, and uh, to me, even though all the games have their differences, I always feel like Mario feels the same to control in every game, almost like it's there's a weird familiarity, like they like they know how to tweak it, and like it always just feels good to control Mario to me throughout all the games. Um, You're right, we do disagree. Yeah, like, I don't know, there's something, like, I pick up a Mario game, and it just, like, Mario feels like Mario to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but in, in so in this game, it really stands out to me that they, like, changed some of the moves. Like, did you ever long jump? Not really. I did a few times. Yeah. But it was never really out of necessity. Yeah, and, like, the triple jump isn't in there. That one bummed me out a lot. And um, I think you can do the backflip mm-hmm. and like the side flip, but like yeah, they just don't feel this. They don't feel right. Yeah, the side flip is actually weirdly hard to do, uh, and the backflip is horrible because you have to crouch and mm-hmm. wait in order to do it. Which really, the backflip has always been the thing that you do if you can't do the side flip. Yeah. Um, but. They really punish you for it in this game by making you sit there until your character yeah. starts vibrating. The out of ground pound bounce, though, I found myself that found like it had a lot of utility in this. Yeah, that one is super good. Uh, my disagreement about character control mostly has to do with fluidity. I agree that it is weird that they change some of the moves, but I think that they do it periodically to sort of like introduce new things without overcomplicating stuff Mm -hmm. um to me sunshine and uh odyssey are the winners as far as like how mario controls Mm -hmm. uh with 64 is probably a close um second to them Mm -hmm. and then this game is so strange uh (laughs) you also have the spin around move yeah which i used a lot and that was like my i didn't do the ground pound as much Mm -hmm. as i did the spin thing and I have no good reason for why that is. I just think the move is fun to do. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, it's a combination of the perspective controls and the different move set makes everything in this game feel just like a little bit like blockier and wonkier mm. than it was in previous games. Yeah. It's like, I just feel like, because obviously like they want you to like, use the power-ups like they want that to take like the uh place of like the 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 usual like mario movement Mm -hmm. so like it's just weird that like some moves are in and some aren't and like some moves are like really nerfed or feel weird it's like i feel like just don't have them or keep them or or do have them and keep them more similar to their original uh incarnation yeah it took me probably like five hours of playing this game before i realized that you could dive out of a ground pound yeah so like if you 
which I did many times, ground pounded to my death because mm-hmm. I was trying to do something to correct, like course correct. I actually could have yeah. by ground pounding and then diving in the direction that I wanted to go, but instead just yeah, yeah, that, that that hidden like Mario move utility, mm-hmm. and that's classic. Uh, that is classic. I wish that they didn't do it i Mm. wish that there was something that told you maybe there is like a manual that i thought i was too good to read knowing nintendo there's probably something in there Mm -hmm. um but yeah i don't know i i think it kind of gets it gets a slight pass for me with my complaints that i already have about the uh about the Mm power-ups and the camera in mind the movement gets a bit of a pass because we are working with four different characters, and that's true. I think it feels smooth enough in given the rest of the game to sort of justify some of the differences. Though I don't know, I wish. <laughs> Once again, we'll come back to it because I think that the movement system works super well in three D. Uh, and works less well in the 2D parts of the game. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I guess like to round out this first half, um, we we've mentioned it offhandedly many times, but this game, in addition to like feeling it's a combination of like the 2D and 3D designs of Mario, also feels like it's almost like a greatest hits of Mario. Like it feels like almost every part of it is like building off of something specific from one of the older games um like it's got like the world map um like the older games do it's got uh like the characters from mario 2 it's got a lot of like the same well i guess all mario games have the same enemies but um i don't know it's just like it, it it feels like it doesn't have as much of its own identity like it's even got like the um like the gold items from New Super Mario Brothers two, and there's like a lot of like references to other like specific uh, mechanics and things from other games. Yeah, it feels like it is a, especially in the, with the context of Super Mario three D Land. Mm-hmm. I feel like this game does feel like it lacks its own sort of identity, which is funny when you consider it as a game style in Super Mario Maker 2, Mm. because it feels like the most unique style and the things that it pulls from, like the clear pipes uh, and like standing on thwomps is actually kind of a weird thing that this game is unique in ish. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not really because you could do it in, in the other 3d games as well, but like it's, it's unique in that, in that game. Uh, it, it feels like it retains an identity based on look and, like, these really specific things. Yeah, aesthetics, it it definitely has its own look to it, for sure. Yeah, but when you look at it, like, when you play the game, it doesn't feel like it is unique, even though it is definitely <laughs> different than, like, all of the other games that you've played yeah, before. It, it feels more different. Uh, a more different it, it feels like a more different S. <laughs> now, um, when you... When you put it in like th- three or um super mario maker and next to like the the older 2d games yeah uh i had like two other things that i wanted to mention on 3d world specific oh yeah sure sure um the first one is bosses mm. uh this game has like a strange folk not a focus that's not really the right word it plays like older 2d mario games where every level concludes with a boss in a castle you do like a castle level or an airship level and then you fight a boss and it cycles through a few of them uh and then there's a couple of special bosses that show up at different times (laughs) did you like many of them no um (laughs) yeah like the boss design really feels tacked on in this i Mm -hmm. think um it, 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 it especially noticeable because, like, I felt like Galaxy actually had good bosses. Uh, Galaxy's the best. Yeah. Boss Mario game. Uh, they just, they feel really phoned in here. Um, Like, Boom Boom and Pom Pom, is Pom-pom, that their names? Yeah. yeah, are, like, just comically easy. 
uh, to beat, and you had to do it like six times in this. Not maybe not that many, but a lot. Uh, you at least that if you do everything. Yeah, but um, yeah. Yeah, and like the other ones, like oh, the weird snake heads. Like they're just they're not hard. You just kind of jump on them, and it's not. I don't know. Yeah, and like, that's all of every boss you jump on them. I do think the final boss encounter with Bowser is fantastic. Where you climb the tower. Yeah, full agree. That one is great. Uh, they did a. Re- I feel like, and once again, Sunshine is an exception here. But now in the opposite direction, the final Bowser fights in 3D Mario games typically are really good Mm. and this one is outstanding because it does the things that the game is good at yeah it it reminds me of um i'm sure there's plenty of other better examples of this but it's the one that comes to mind is the final boss of trine Mm. is a platforming level yes um and this does the same thing where like the, the final boss is mostly a platforming level where you're avoiding being killed by bowser as you platform up this tower uh, and then you uh, hit him with the big power block at the end. <laughs> right. Uh, and, and he's using the power-ups against you. Yep. Um, which is also very cool, because the game, uh, as we said, is really focused on them. So it's just like a really, really well-done final boss, and it's the spectacle and everything. It's very cool. If you don't want to go all the way back to trying in our catalog, uh, <laughs> I do want I, I want to shout out, because this is the Mario episode, mm. and I want to fucking pull out mm. the most obscure bullshit Tamashi? games. Tamashi. Yeah, I, just, I knew that's what you were going to say. You made me think about it. <laughs> Had two types of boss fights, and the one that we both loved is the one that is just a platform level. Yeah. It's just like, avoid dying. Platform away from the boss. Yeah, and that shit's really good. And lots of games um, do it. But... Celeste had, like, with, uh, what was The her ghost name? of Bat- Mr. Ta- ta- oh, Mr. Tamash. <laughs> I was going to say Battlein. Oh, and the, yeah, the Battlein. You have to chase well. her to hug her. Mm-hmm. Like that that kind of a thing. So it's just the challenge is platforming. Yeah. Those, I mean, in a platformer, that kind of a boss design can be fucking great. And especially. it can be really intense. Yeah. And v- C, E, G, uh, the fucking Jinzo tree. Uh, yeah. In, yeah, uh, yeah. Or yeah. in the Blind Forest also. Uh, just a platforming boss fight, and it's fucking great. Like, it's arguably the best part of that whole game. Escape the water. <laughs> so, yeah, I... And honestly, I kind of like the boss fights in, in Odyssey as well. I think Yeah, yeah, really Odyssey well had a couple of good ones, for sure. Mm-hmm. And, uh, th- and this one just... They're just very boring, by and large. Yeah. I, I think, like, the design of the game overall is really good, so... If they had to skimp on the bosses, then it's I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, and shout outs to my fellow fucking ninety nine point nine percenters who got through almost all of this game. Uh, there is a level. One of the last levels in the game is one that is just a boss rush, and mm. you just have to beat all of the bosses in a row. And the fucking horrible thing about it is that the hardest thing to beat is the time limit because you have to beat all of the bosses and the final boss of the boss rush, which is the stupid guy who jumps the bouncy clown man. Oh yeah. That thing, which is a dumb boss. Yeah. (laughs) And you have to just do that all in one go. There's no checkpoints. So you have, so like that took me, I think three tries to clear and it was all just the time limit because bosses are too easy. And yeah. they are very interesting. Uh, ba 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 Hey, yeah. Uh, and speaking of ba 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 da ba the other thing I want to talk about is uh, this game's mu- music. The music, yeah. Uh, I love this soundtrack. Yes. Um, it. I. They go for this big band arrangement um, of the songs. Like, it feels a lot more casual. And... It just, it fits Mario so well. Like, I like that the Mario games do something different, like all of them, with their music. Like, each one Mm -hmm. has its own distinct feel. But, like, I feel like they nailed what Mario should sound like so hard on this that I thought it might stick in future games. Right. Uh, It didn't. Uh, Odyssey (laughs) does its own thing. But, like, it just, it is just so very good. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I partially because I don't really have the vocabulary to to make this connection and partially because uh, 
uh, I'm dumb. The <laughs> the phrase big band never really came into my head, but that is accurate. It mm-hmm. is just like this sort of like jazzy arrangement of everything. And it has this just like d- dirty fucking feel to it mm-hmm. in a way that none of the other Mario games do, either because they were composed digitally and don't feel like they're being played by live performers because they ain't or they're the really clean like orchestra style that galaxy had Mm -hmm. and this is like that perfect middle ground where it feels like it is being played by real people who are having a really good time and probably didn't have to fucking like do the movie whiplash in order to get into the orchestra it's very (laughs) relaxed and casual sounding um yeah, and like you know, like the band uh, from New Donk City mm. in Odyssey, it feels like like that type of thing, like a small like quartet, like a like a small like like uh, like brass band, uh, just is playing all the songs. You just having like a good time. Yeah, I love it. It's super good, and is maybe my favorite part of the game. <laughs> it it is like, and I think they really killed it um, with this game and um, Mario Kart Eight. They were on their Mario music game on the Wii U um, because, like, uh, Mario Kart 8 has this, like, really awesome jazz soundtrack uh, that really fits Mario Kart as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will be sad if they go with a different style for Mario Kart because that, that fits that game like a glove. Yeah. And I know that it's really popular right now for TikTok kids to listen to the Mario 64 soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Uh, But you should be listening (laughs) to the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack because it's dope as hell. Get an appreciation. This is a message from your elders. (laughs) I mean, I've I've been there. I like the Mario 64 soundtrack, Mm -hmm. but come on. Yeah, you need to, in order to be an adult, like Patrick says, <laughs> to right. discover an appreciation for freeform, freeform jazz. jazz. Yeah, we all like Dire Dire Docs <laughs> and Bobomb Battlefield, all right? Mm-hmm. Now, get out the saxophones and the trombones. Listen to that, <laughs> that, that sweet, sweet jazz with Mario. Sweet, sweet jazz with Mario. Uh, I have a controversial... Potentially unusual question. Here. Sure, and that question, yes, is do do we have first final thoughts? Okay, we can break it up like this. Okay, I, that's not a bad. Idea. I didn't think of that myself, but I like that idea. Uh, so the base game of 3D World, I guess, I'll tie back in with my thesis that I said at the beginning is uh, this is a game that. I think it is solid. Yes. It's good. It is fun. Uh, you're not going to regret buying it and spending your time playing it. Like, not even close. But I do feel like it's something that's going to be liked by everyone and loved by no one. Uh, <laughs> besides that niche audience that really clicks with it. Because, mm-hmm. um, like, you just, you kind of, you play it and then you kind of forget about it. Uh, which sounds kind of harsh. Um, at least to me, saying that about a Mario game. But yeah, like it really does kind of feel like it lacks that identity amongst, you know, the pantheon of other Mario games. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's like... Yeah, it's like it's the, the good, clean, fun part of a Mario game without the personality, I think. Um, in And as I said... Um, or at least tried to express anyway. Like there's good stuff to it. It I do think that des- like the level design is really good. Uh, as I think all Mario games are, uh, they probably have to. Uh, I imagine designing a Mario level like they get the new guy on the team. Like, it's probably very stressful and it has to go through lots of revisions and stuff. Like Mario games are very polished, mm-hmm. um, and that's all here. And playing is like I like playing as the four different characters. I think that's a really cool element of the game that I appreciate. Um, Captain Toad is great. Uh, it's nice that you don't have to chase Peach around, and you can actually play as her this time. And, yeah, like, there's a lot of good in here. It's just... it. There's just a different, like, a high standard for Mario, I guess. And it doesn't quite rise to the occasion for me. Yeah. Um... 
I agree with a lot of that, actually. Um, the the biggest difference, I would say, between our opinion is that I think just in the end, you liked the game a little bit more than I did. Mm. Uh, and it's wild to me that you almost 100 percent it. Yeah. I'm back in my I'm fucking up to my old bullshit recently mm-hmm. uh where I've been playing things like very much to completion way more than I I have for a long time. Um but yeah, there's something like I said earlier like what my final thoughts probably would have been coming into this if I had just somehow managed to keep it in me the whole time. Yeah. Is that this game feels like the hybrid of a 2D and a 3D game that is the worst of both worlds. It it does contain 2D Mario design and 3D Mario design, but both of them like conflict with each other in a way that makes the game harder to play than I think it should be. Like it has concessions made to make it work in the engine that they're using, and those concessions detract from what is the really polished singular experience that most Mario games are. Uh like, like, a lot of the ancillary stuff, I think, is amazing. I think the music is some of the best in the series. I think Captain Toad is super fun, and they do a really good job of, of spreading it throughout the game to make it feel fresh every time. Um, the Bowser fight, super great. Some of these levels, insanely clever, uh, that I loved. Uh, and yet, I found myself sort of, like, defeated, <laughs> I'd be playing the game and it just, it didn't draw me in, in the way that the other 3d Mario games do. And I didn't like, it didn't feel as smooth as the 2d games do. And I wish that it had been one or the other. Um, and I'm guessing in based on my experience with the rest of what we're going to talk about and also the rest of my whole life, I kind of wish it would have committed more to the 3D parts of the game. So, uh, I give it 6 out of 10. (laughs) IGN.com. IGN.com, there was too much water. Uh, And on that note, let's take a break. Wahoo! Welcome back to this impromptu episode of No Clip Pocket. I'm Chad <laughs> Rutherman. And I'm Andy Kennick. And welcome to No Clip Pocket. <laughs> By a trampoline, they can you can jump on them. This is I don't I don't know if meta's not the right word, but <laughs> self referential weird shit happening here. It really is, yeah. Uh yeah, it's meta. It's like a meta. This is a podcast. Welcome back to the podcast for the podcast. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about Super Mario 3D World colon Bowser's Fury. Uh, and probably also a little bit more about 3D World regular, depending on how things shake out. Uh-huh. Um, so Bowser's Fury is the new piece of content that is included in the Switch remaster of 3D World. And unbeknownst to me, because I somehow missed all of the fucking marketing for Mm. this, it is a 3D platformer in the style of an Odyssey or a Galaxy or a 64. Uh, And that is fucking weird. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I I can't believe you didn't know. Had no idea. Because, yeah, I feel like that's all anybody was fucking talking about for a little while. Because uh, it is, it's very weird thing for them to do. Like, they basically uh, kind of took the engine, I think. It's the same engine. It might not be. Right. It might be the Odyssey engine. I don't know. Um, but, and they they took all the assets and all the gameplay concepts and made a just full 3D platformer out of them. Uh, it's like an expansion or like its own separate little mini game that's mm-hmm. added on to this. Uh, to get, I guess, to get people to double dip. Yeah, like me and buy the game again. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So, for for me, like I'm as we mentioned on the first half, like I much prefer 3D Mario. Nothing against 2D games. I like those too, Mm -hmm. Um, but they don't quite like excite me in the same way. And um, 
and we talked about the Wii U on our very bad uh, audio quality uh, episode of, of Go Clip, where we recorded a podcast while we were driving somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I don't recommend it. Yeah, I don't either. But uh, we talked about the Wii U, and I feel like one of the reasons, among many others, uh, that it, it didn't sell particularly well is because it didn't have a 3D uh, Zelda or 3D Mario. Um because like three, I think 3D World came out, and yeah, like it's not exciting. I think like right. I, I feel like people want that like shiny new like Super Mario Odyssey style thing. Yeah, and when they revealed 3D World, I just remember it kind of being like, oh, is this like new soup? Yeah, and uh, when I played this, or like when I heard about it, I th- I wanted it like this is what I wanted 3D World to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like this is the direction they should have gone from the beginning. Yeah, uh, like I alluded to on the previous half, uh, the I wish that the game had focused on one side of its e- design. Exactly. Yeah, and I think this is what leads me to believe that I think a 3D version of this game is actually really interesting because. What it takes from the 2D design is the emphasis on power-ups and the use of them as your, like, hit point system, Mm -hmm. uh, which most of the other 3D Mario games do not do. Yeah, and um, another thing is that they started to do this in Odyssey, and maybe uh, we had to go down this road to get to this point, but I think partially also because of 3D World. Mm -hmm. They've tried to, like, set up the game world is like a hub and then have like levels inside of it. Like you, you come across like a little Island. That's like a level that feels like a little bit more like a 2d, like structured level more so than just like the big sandboxes of the or previous uh, 3d Mario games. Right. And like, this is not something that we talked about in the first half, but being able to run around and do shit, like pick up power ups and do like a jump and hit a block on the overworld map mm-hmm. is cute, but it is not substance. It's no. not something that you really give a shit about when you're playing the game. Yeah, it's like novel at first that mm-hmm. you're just walking around on the map, but then it becomes not novel in like, <laughs> you know, yeah. A few minutes. Yeah, it's weird that I got to the point where I was like, I wish that I could just press right. And go to the next world, yeah. like you could in a two D game. Like this is a, this was supposed to be an innovation, and it just falls flat. I don't know if it's supposed to be an innovation so much as a, it's just supposed to be novel. Sure, like it's just supposed to be like, oh, isn't it fun that you don't have to follow the lines and you can walk around? <laughs> yeah, but it just wasn't. It it didn't do anything particularly special for me. No. So, getting to jump into 3D World and boot up a game version that is on the very same cartridge as that and have a fully realized open world to run around in was very interesting. Uh, And I don't love it for the first, just as an off Mm. the bat, I don't love the open world of this game. I think that it has a bit too much of a focus on huge areas of emptiness uh and the gating is weird and kind of confusing to know when you can go to the different levels um but preferable and interesting uh and plessy is dope as a mode yeah. of transport here uh i loved this sure yeah. um i don't think anyone should be surprised uh <laughs> by that but like I expected to like it, but I don't know. I liked it more than I thought I would. Um, it just, something about, like, the, I like that they're, to see them being, like, experimental with Mario. Like, I didn't love, like, the whole ticking clock of the giant Bowser showing up. Like, mm-hmm. at first it was cool, but then it got a little tedious the further you went. Yeah. Uh, but I, it's that's weird, and in, as you said, weird and interesting. And it was, like, it was cool to see in, a, like, a f- short five hour 3d mario game like in i like that you partner up with bowser jr even though he doesn't do much um it's just doing different stuff with mario and like in like the more um the power-up stood out even more in bowser's fury is like feeling 
different for uh, the 3D design. Yeah. Um, d- designing the 3D levels around the the, the power ups from 3D World was interesting, um, and I like. I think they're really on to something. This feels like, and I think this is what it was supposed to be, but maybe it wasn't. But it feels like the blueprint for a game, like a new game that we're gonna get in a few years, maybe. Yeah, it's it's weird. This is what I was saying when I said that I didn't understand necessarily the context of this game mm-hmm. because like. This is a game that is a new 3D Mario game in the vein of past 3D Mario games glued onto one of those past 3D Mario games that is least like this. Yeah. And you have to wonder, like, is this something that they wanted to do originally but didn't have the time or, like, didn't feel like it would go over well being glued onto a thing or maybe sold as a separate thing entirely? Or... Is this something that was fully a new idea that they made and stuck onto this as an incentive for purchasing it? It could be a combination of both. I'll yeah. acknowledge that. But it's incredibly strange to think about this now in a post Odyssey world where this is like maybe the direction that they want to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's. It's cool. Like, it's a cool game, and I really like the design of it. Um, And it makes the power-ups feel different. It makes traversal feel different. And I love the Bowser thing, but I agree it does get a little old. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is... Yeah, it is cool. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. This this part of the game I did complete 100%, uh, and the difference between completing the game and completing it 100% is about an hour and a half or two hours. Yeah. Uh, So it's not a substantial difference uh, in time, and the later in the game you get, the more you're like, all right, Bowser, Mm -hmm. like, I fucking get it. Especially, like, trying to get the last couple of, of, of fucking stars and your little cat shines, Mm -hmm. and you're like, holy shit, like, I have to, like, I'm already doing one of the hardest things in the game (laughs) that I didn't do during the first part, but now I have to do it with this, or go through a lengthy boss encounter to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. That part, I felt, was a little botched, but overall, love the design, love the implementation of everything. I thought this was a great inclusion. Yeah. Um... I guess like, it does feel like a proof of concept almost like can like it's because 3D World was a combination of the 2D and 3D and maybe they were like looking at uh, like what they've been doing with Mario and they put in 3D World into Mario Maker and you're like we well, it works as just a 2D thing mm-hmm. can we make it work as just a 3D thing and you know and yeah, like they'd done Odyssey and like that everyone loved that mm-hmm. and it went over really well. Even JJ loved that. Yeah. And like maybe they were thinking like, oh, like maybe three D World was like a bit of a misstep uh, and they wanted to like rethink it, like they were gonna port this anyway. Uh people had been predicting it since the Switch fucking came out. Yeah. <laughs> um Uh and it also you almost kinda feel like some Zelda influence in this, like how it's more open and like like the lighthouses like, just, like, instead of having, like, uh, your goal just being to, like, get a Power Star or Cinnamon or <laughs> uh, a Shine Sprite or whatever, uh, y- y- it's more of a focus of, like, oh, you have to light up these lighthouses that affect the world. Like, it feels a little bit more modern in its design, like, the openness. So, like, yeah, it, it does feel like they're experimenting. Um, so I'll be surprised if we don't see this stuff reflected in a future thing but like you never fucking know with nintendo true they might have just like someone had this idea and then like miyamoto came into the office one day it's like yeah make this its own thing and then left uh, and went on vacation <laughs> right uh <laughs> had to go open fucking the super mario world japan yeah so you never fucking know but uh yeah it, it does feel like they're kind of feeling out um, like they still want to combine the 2D design with 3D, it seems like, and they're like trying to figure out the best way to do it. Yeah, is really what it feels like. Yeah, and I I, I agree with all of that. Like I think it's very cool, and also the very like puzzly elements of uh, some of the the cat shines made it a lot more interesting. Um, 
I love a platforming challenge. Mm-hmm. I love a platforming challenge, especially when fucking Mario is the protagonist, because it's always a fun time to make him run around and do a bunch of jumps. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that it was a good idea to break up some of that by using these smaller islands and having some of the levels be just like, what the fuck do you do? Find a way into a zone or like get Bowser to shoot at the blocks in order to get behind it. And I think that this, it feels a lot like the first level of a bigger game Mm -hmm. where it really did feel like it doesn't always go as far as it could, And it feels intentional, like they're holding back. And that makes me hopeful that there will be, like, a larger version of Bowser's Fury. Yeah. Though hopefully with so many fewer cat things in it. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely very heavily themed to 3D World. Yeah, like, I, I like the inclusion of just, like, regular cats. Yes. They're just on some of the islands. Like, when I saw that, I was like, oh, yeah, like... That's weird. Have we ever seen cats in Mario before? That seems kind of unusual Yeah. to me. I don't know why it stood out. It was just like a cute little thing. Well, it's supposed to like stand you, out because you can If you get have a... the cat suit, they'll follow you around. Yeah, and if you pick them up and carry them back to their mother, they'll give yeah. you a, a shine. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I really like... yeah, Because, like, as we were talking, this game feels very different um, from other uh, Mario games, even 3D Mario games. It feels like its own thing. Yeah. Um, we like the the original game lacks a sense of identity and this has it in spades. Yeah. Um but yeah, like when you're starting out like you don't really know how it's going to be structured. Like, you know, you're going around to each island and like I didn't know if each island had more than one, you know, with shine to get and like I noticed like maybe it would say that there would be two. It's like get a shine and then collect the pieces. Right. The... Uh, I don't know what they're called. Of the shines. Shine shards. Yeah, that's I, probably what they're called. I don't know if it is, but it is a good guess. I think me. I think that's right, and if it's not, then whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, get the shine shards. I thought maybe that might be it, but then like you had to, uh, you come back through. It's like very organic. Like you just kind of go around and explore, and you come back and you're like, oh, okay, there's two more to get here, and you and you know you just keep going back and forth. Yeah, like the pacing of it. And, uh, like, you're just riding around between everything. Like, I don't know, it just, um, felt like the content was spread out in a way that I I liked. Yeah. Uh, If I had a complaint about it, and it would only be one, it is that in order to, some of the different shines change the layouts of the world, Mm. and in order to get them to spawn, you have to, like, fucking leave and then come back. Which, if you were playing through the game normally... You don't even notice. Yeah. But once you start going back for everything, you suddenly get into it. You're like, okay, well, I got one shine on this island. So then you do the second one, and then you just fucking ride Plessy in a big circle, and then come back. Yeah. And then it will load the second one. It's like, this feels awkward and a little strange, but... Mm. uh, Like I said, you don't notice it if you're just playing through it on sort of like normal gamer brain yeah and it's only when you come back for completionist mode where you uh like start to realize sort of the clunkiness of it yeah not much of a complaint but that is the one that i have yeah. um, um my other complaint is that that one fucking level is way too hard which one the one that's like a sky fortress the one no that one that one is hard i will give you that yeah the one that I'm complaining about is the one with the big rotating platforms. Uh, it's, like, near the end. Mm-hmm. I think I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, I think it's, like, at the, at the last three level mm-hmm. hub. It's the one on the left, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was just tough. It's a tough <laughs> level. I had a hard time with it, and it's near the end of the game. So Bowser is just there all the time. And it's it's just a rough, yeah. rough play. Yeah, yeah. Don't disagree. Like, some of the... Yeah, one of the... I think it, it might be the same level. I think I'm mixing two in my mind right now, but there was one there, yeah, that was really tough with Bowser just kind of fucking jumping around everywhere <laughs> Yep. towards the end. Like, I really wish that after you beat the game, he just stopped respawning, mm-hmm. and, like, you had to go ring the bell to if you wanted to bring him back to smash the bowser blocks yeah giving a tr- giving him a trigger i think would have been a great um uh, like end game thing especially yeah. like 
There's so many ways to do it. You Bowser, Jr. Bowser Jr. paint something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, you have his kid here. Like, there's lots of great in-universe reasons for it to work. Mm -hmm. And they just kept it on the same timer, which made it feel... Especially because if you do Bowser again during the end game, mm -hmm. you have to do the whole, like, quote-unquote final boss where you ride Plessy and jump into him. Yeah. And it just takes so long. Like, you reasonably shouldn't do it if you're just trying to grind out the rest of the shines. Yeah. So. Eh... Minor complaints, though. Yeah. Uh, for completionists. Mm -hmm. And I think you mentioned this earlier, uh, and we just kind of talked around it. <laughs> but uh, the power, the way the power ups work, you don't have lives in this, um, and but you do have power ups that you just kind of stockpile, and then you can use them whenever. Uh, I do think they give them to you a bit too frequently. Cause you always have a ton. <laughs> yeah. But there were some harder parts where I lost a bunch. Um, like there's like we talked about slide levels. There is a slide level, um, or it's like a shoot that you go down and then yeah, ice the skates. one with the fucking ice skate. Uh, yep. And I missed that the second ice skate existed because like I would get in the ice skate, then crash into the wall and get out of it because it was way easier to do without the ice skate. Right. But then like the the last third of it, you needed it to get through it fast enough, and mm -hmm. I didn't notice it was it was like down below. Um, so I wasted a whole bunch of power ups going through that because uh, i would like get hit like by some spikes or whatever and lose m my power up and yeah et cetera, et cetera. so i made it harder than it needed to be but there are some tricky parts where i did lose a bunch but overall the balancing i think they just give them out like lollipops yeah i think overall and this is like this is the weirdest this is i'm declaring it Mm -hmm. So, right now, this is the weirdest piece of, of Mario c criticism ever conceived. Mm -hmm. The ice skate is by far, to me, the worst shoe power-up <laughs> introduced in a Mario game. Uh, there are lots of times that Mario just gets in a big shoe that mm -hmm. is bigger than him, that seems to be made for no one. Uh -huh. it, and the ice skate feels awkward to control, doesn't feel, like, it's not zippy in the way that you would want from its design you're mm -hmm. like oh you get an ice skate you just just like shoot through the ice no big deal the big deal you t <laughs> it takes so long to get going uh it just isn't satisfying and is not great and it doesn't shoot clouds out that eat things which is what the big fucking boot in the in the mario yeah. games do i don't think it's the power up itself that's bad i just don't think they ever like designed a good level for it like i i don't think like in anything, anytime it ever popped up, it's just like, it's a little ice rink, skate around it and kill the Goombas. Like, there's nothing to really do with it. Yeah. I think it's the problem. And they never give it, like, space to run yeah, around. Yeah. Like, you always are always just in this, I guess because it's if they too had strong, but it isn't. Something like a Mario, like a regular 3d mario like a mario sunshine or mario 64 kind of level mm -hmm. that took place on like a big frozen lake and you could use the shoe to get around like that seems like the kind of thing that would be good for yeah yeah it's lame that it it never really had a chance to shine yeah it never what had can a chance you do? To what skate. can you do yeah <laughs> uh but yeah no i agree with your overall point though about them giving you too many power-ups um, I never felt like I was in a situation where I might not have one at the ready. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but this also plays into the, I feel like they were holding stuff back a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It just, it felt like there was a, a spark of an idea here that they wanted to play with and they didn't really want to put up a lot of barriers in your way. Yeah. I still died a lot because I would stubbornly try and get shines while Bowser was around. Yeah. And he is devastating. Like, appropriately so, given the scale and the fucking, like, mm -hmm. spectacle of it all. It, it felt like it depended on the level. Like, I felt like easier levels, he was actually pretty easy to just avoid. Mm -hmm. But later levels where you can fall off a lot more stuff, he, he is a much bigger problem. Yeah. I wish that there was a little bit more fidelity to his hitbox as well. Because, mm. like, if you, like, try and go under, like, his claw, you'll get hit from, like... For, yeah. yeah, way below it, and you don't actually touch him. And sure, 
like whatever it's not that big of a deal but it feels like a personality thing where like mario would like taunt bowser by like going through his legs uh-huh. or whatever uh so long gay bowser so long gay bowser uh a fucking gay icon bowser mm-hmm. and uh he doesn't in this game you just kind of get fucking stopped and destroyed if you run into him uh but still really like Bowser jumping in and just fucking shit up. Yeah, I like that it changes cool. the environment because he, he drops the spikes. Uh, yeah. Allows you to get to certain things that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. Uh, in the end game, there's Lucky Island, which will appear in five different locations. Like the fucking quantum moon. Uh-huh. And you have to jump over to it to get... There's like five shines on it, so mm. you jump into uh, onto each of them. It's cool. I liked a lot of the things that the game did. Uh, and Bowser's, like, up there? What did you think about the boss fights with him? Uh, they they just felt, like, incredibly Mario. <laughs> well, you know, like, <laughs> like we've I've said it a number of times, uh, but with the exception of, like, Galaxy, I feel like the Mario games have always had, like, subpar boss encounters. Um, yeah. It just kind of feels like a formality. A lot of the time. Uh, this is better than average, I think, probably, but, you know, not really anything to write home about. Yeah. It's cool that it there's that imposing presence, though, like when you're just playing, you know, out like the boss feels threatening and imposing outside of the fight, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah, like most other things in the game, I think they've made the boss fight just a little bit too simple. Yeah. Um, uh, especially with the ability to pick up the spikes that you literally are mm. invincible when you are holding one. Like <laughs> I didn't know you could even you. do that. So yeah, uh, it's very cheap. Uh, and it makes, it makes the fights a lot less satisfying when you know that you can do it. So mm. I don't know. Uh, I th- just want to mention mm. that I hate the fucking cat thing in this game. <laughs> It, not in this game, in this thing specifically, in Bowser's Fury. Yeah. The fact that literally everything is a cat is, like, deeply upsetting to me. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> I mean, at least they committed to it, you know? I guess. They sure did commit to it a lot. But, mm-hmm. like, the Koopas are cats. Yeah. The Goombas are cats. That's kind of weird. The, the cats enemies. are cats. There are regular cats. That's the even weirder. Yeah. <laughs> Like, how do the cats feel about this? <laughs> that there's a fucking... They're in their weird feline paradise. This You're actually... <laughs> this area uh, that the game takes place in is just cat heaven. Mm-hmm. And the big fucking bells. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I guess one thing I want to talk about, just like... Um, we already talked about how this game is... Uh, interesting uh, for in the Mario series, but like it's just interesting in games generally. Um, like for them to do a port or a remaster of this game, and then to just make a new thing and tack it on. Yeah. Um, like we just talked about Xenoblade, they did a similar thing. Like they just remade it a decade later and made an expansion for it, or like an epilogue chapter or whatever you want to call it like that just feel like that's really unusual or like um Baldur's Gate got like remastered and like I think got it got Be- DLC Beam Dog yeah or I don't know what the developers called but yeah they didn't a whole yeah like another campaign for it like a canon thing that bridges Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 together I think so like that sort of thing is really cool I think um It makes me think about, like, um, one of the things that got me into YouTube, like, in 2011 or whatever, like, made me make a YouTube account, was finding out about, like, uh, about Ura Zelda, Uh, how there was going to be, like, an expansion for Ocarina of Time on the the disk drive, Uh, but then that console failed, and we never got it, and there were always, like, rumors about it and stuff, Mm -hmm. and, like, theories and stuff, and that's, like, what got me into, like, watching YouTube. It's like... What if Nintendo just fucking made that and put it out now? Like, they're just like, here's uh, Ocarina of Time on Switch, and it has an expansion. Yeah. Or Zelda is here. Uh, Like, that would just be really cool. Um, Yeah, I just like to see stuff like that. It's, like, really interesting to revisit an old game. uh, Like, especially a popular old game. 
Yeah, it's extremely... It's weird, especially coming from Nintendo in a certain way, and also in a certain way, I guess, not as much, because Nintendo has a history of including a lot of stuff in their games um, to the point where, like, this game by itself has, like, a main story, and then it has a huge amount of additional content that was included in the Wii U version. And then you also have the Bowser's Fury expansion, but then we're also coming off of the remaster of Skyward Sword, mm. which did not have anything. No. Just is Skyward Sword regular, but with a controller now. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the Mario 3D All-Stars, mm -hmm. where it was just ports of all of the games. And so... It, and then, yeah, like you mentioned, fucking Xenoblade has this whole other thing that took, like, 10, 15 hours to get through. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like we're in an era where games are being remade all the time. Yeah, and I feel like, and maybe this will change, you never know what the future is going to throw at you, but uh, the, the way games are being made, I feel like it's becoming more... Uh, standardized now like more things use unreal and unity and it's like easier to port stuff now mm -hmm. and it's probably like a lot easier like for things made like in the last like 10 or so years for you to do something like this yeah the the interesting thing that it that to me anyway that this is asking sort of a question about is if games preservation is a goal Mm -hmm. for you as a developer when you remake a game and you include additional content with it there's like a weird standard being set where it's like if i want to play mario 3d world i can play the original version on the wii u or i could play this which is effectively sort of the definitive version of the game because not only does it have the additional content it is also like a slightly updated graphically version or whatever. Mm -hmm. In the future, do you can do you include Bowser's Fury <laughs> in future versions of Mario 3D World mm -hmm. if they're ever made? Uh, because we're now looking to the future where games have been remade more than one time. Yeah, Legend of Zelda, like you mentioned, Ocarina of Time came out on the 64 in 1997, seven or eight. Yeah. And then in 2002, had a release on the GameCube with Master Quest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in 2012 or something, had the 3DS release. Yeah, and I would bet money it's going to get remade again. Yeah, almost, Like, in the not-too-distant future. So, like, what are we... Like, if it's 2040 and it hasn't been done yet, I'll be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so you end up with, like, if they if they make another version in, like... T two three years whatever that's on the switch or the switch plus whatever mm -hmm. happens at that stage does it have master quest is it a re is it a port of the 3ds version i think that yeah you include the new content and i think it's one of the reasons why new content that like that is often separate because mm -hmm. uh, like you can just like if you re-released this game uh 3d world and plus bowser's fury <laughs> Um, in the future, yeah, you would include it because it's like its own separate thing. You get the original game, and you have that, and they're like together. Uh, and like, there's no downside to including it, right? So yeah, like Master Quest is just a second quest that you can do that like remixes the dungeons. So like, mm -hmm. you still have regular old <laughs> Ocarina of Time right there. And if you don't care about Master Quest, you don't have to touch it. But that was not included in the 3DS version of the game. Yeah, it is. Fuck me, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's not like I don't have like a strong feeling one way or the other. Like if they made a like a Xenoblade Chronicles one and two duo pack yeah. and didn't include Future Connected, I wouldn't fucking shit my pants I, over I it. I feel like they wouldn't do that. Probably not. Yeah. But if they did, I wouldn't. Well, and also, um, Xenoblade 2 has the its own DLC as well. Also true, Which yeah. they sold as its own thing. <laughs> so that one they might not include. That, that one seems more... Because, like, in my head, like, the future connected feels more like it's been stapled on to what <laughs> Xenoblade is. Yeah. Whereas Torna, the Golden Country, or whatever they call it, the DLC for 2, feels like, like they wanted it to be its own standalone thing more. Sure. 
But like that that kind of a thing. Like I'm just interested in sort of how. Oh yeah, everyone's going to do it different too, yeah. which does make it an interesting topic. And Nintendo even does it differently with their own stuff all the time. So yeah, it's I don't know. It's cool that we're getting remakes because it's an interesting sort of way. Like look at the fucking Demon Souls remake on PS5 mm. is a game that like obviously did not need to include additional content. People complained because of the whole, like, ooh, Archstone thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you don't know what I'm talking about, congratulations, you're not as lame as us. Uh, But looks totally different. Like, it has been upgraded in every way that they could do without changing the actual game. Mm -hmm. Uh, And for the most part, like, cool, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I watched, uh, I don't know why I watched this. (laughs) <laughs> like an interview, I don't know if it was like a no clip documentary referencing mm-hmm. no clip on no clip. Um, we're just gonna keep the meta rolling, here. yeah. Um, they were talking about like how like painstaking of a process it is, and how like they try to use as much of the original code as they can, and how like every time they change something, they have to be like have like a team of people go through it and be like, okay, are we adhering to the spirit of this? Because people are gonna get angry, right? If like we fucking change this, because they remake games like Shadow of the Colossus and Demon Souls, like ones that people really care about. Yeah. So yeah, it seems like they're they take the right approach. So it's- like. Blue, Blue point, point right? yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, like as long as you do it with care, like that, yeah. It's I think it's cool to see these things. Yeah. But yeah, that's I think that's the bit that we do on uh, on remakes and remasters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do we have fury thoughts? Uh, my fury thoughts are. Do we uh, have fursona thoughts? Yeah, do we have furry thoughts? Um So yeah, I I really liked this. Like even though I expected to like it, it was like, hey, they added a 3D platformer onto the end of 3D World. Like mm-hmm. that's like a five hour thing. Um I I still managed to surprise me. Like it the formula of 3D World, like kind of reinterpreted as a 3D Mario game, worked really well i think I, and as we mentioned it feels like it's like a proof of concept or like uh uh experimenting like for a future game and like kind of laying some groundwork like what they might want to do what they might not want to do and that's really exciting um I, I i feel like um they're really on to something here and i'd like to see it followed through on and hopefully that's what happens and it's not just some weird one off thing um, but yeah, like it's, it's, I, I like the whole setup. Like they, it's all like in a, in an ocean with all these little islands that you go back and forth between. I like, yeah, the openness of it. It really feels like you just kind of wander from one level to the other and back around and like naturally like kind of make your way through it at like a cool relaxed pace. And then you have the, the inclusion of the bowser ticking clock which adds like a put pressure on you to actually like make forward progress and not just fuck around right like there's a nice (laughs) balance like it's for what it is i think they did an outstanding job um but it does feel a little bit like uh it does leave you wanting more for sure um but yeah i was really pleased with this um and i guess i will quit rambling on and just saying the same thing again and again and say that yeah it just it mapped on really well, and I was surprised how much I liked it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this game takes the elements of, of 3D World that I think were successful, and I think with the powers, the super power that comes with having retrospect on a thing that you've made, mm-hmm. really focuses in on the things that made 3D World unique um, and expands them into something that feels like its own thing. Uh, budget permitting, this is the thing that you buy the game for, I think. Like, especially if you've played the original, Bowser's Fury is the thing to come back for and say, like, this is the new content, this is a wild thing that I cannot believe was made in the way that it was and exists in the form that it's in, and because of all that, it's surprising, it's interesting, and I think it's really fucking good. Uh, 
that there isn't a ton more to say that we haven't already. It yeah. is the music is great. Also, continuing in the tradition of the original version of the game, uh, it's fun to run around to do all the things. It has the sixty four sunshine Odyssey style, like collect a star, given a like little description of what it is, challenges mm-hmm. sort of distinct challenges mode. Uh, and it plays like those games do at their best. Uh, this is a great game. This is a super good game tacked onto a game that I thought was totally fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's bizarre. It's a thing that I feel like only Nintendo can get away with. Uh, and I, I, I would love to see other companies do this kind of thing. That's true, yeah. Especially like um, how expensive games are to make now. Make a weird experimental six hour game. Like fucking like I don't like Naughty Dog. <laughs> or like some like some triple A studio I'd love to see do shit like this. Yeah. Make a DLC for a game that is totally different than your other game. I sang the fucking praises of the worst thing I've ever played in my whole life, <laughs> the end of Zoe on the fucking Resident Evil episode, just because it was so weird and out of left field. This is not that. This is a very good game that's been stapled onto another game, but just the fact that, that it's so different made it unique enough for me to want to play it really badly. And I wasn't disappointed by it, and I enjoyed my time with it. Loved it. A plus. This one gets a 9 out of 10. <laughs> Game of the year, baby. <laughs> Game of the year. Super Mario Brothers 2. Uh, thank you for listening to No Clip this week. What are we talking about next time? Next time, we're going to be talking about Metal Gear Solid 2 colon sons of liberty tactical espionage action (laughs) uh which is obviously the sequel to metal gear solid uh and (laughs) uh biases on the table one of my favorite games ever made uh, I've already played it at the time of the recording here, uh, just in the past couple of weeks, and I look forward oh so much to rehashing all of the PS2 complaining we did on the <laughs> Devil May Cry episode. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I've never played it, so I, hopefully my old games literacy helps me out here. I'm also hoping for that, because if... If you come off as anything other than in love with the game... I enjoyed the first one well enough. It's got to have held up better than that. It does. I agree. With this hypothetical (laughs) you in the future that says this. Uh, To quote me two years ago on a certain Halloween episode, it's a lot of alcohol in these. There sure is. And it's very true of Fum King. Yeah. Uh, So, until that time... If you want to get a hold of us, all of our contact information is on our website at noclippodcast.com. There you can find links to our Twitter, the Discord where we talk about the games, our YouTube channel where you can watch all of our old episodes. Uh, If you want to watch them on YouTube, uh, like our episode on Super Mario Odyssey or a hat in time that's another super 3D mario platformer. sunshine or sunshine or which dan i think is a big fan of that episode. yeah yeah it's an older one um so i i it's not one of the ones that i ever re-listened to <laughs> personally but i think it's from an era where it's like listenable and it isn't like total echoey trash i think it is the episode that introduces our infrequently recurring segment of no clip reviews the legal system mm. of a video game. The, uh, the Pianta legal system. Yeah. <laughs> Which is questionable at best, I mm-hmm. think was our verdict on that one. Uh, so yeah, check that out if you would like to know more about how dumb we are. <laughs> Pounce on that like button. <sighs> Fuck Yeah. And subscribe. Uh, yeah, so that's the sound test. Thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you, uh, me, for listening to the sound test. Yes. <laughs> and telling you whether or not it's a-